Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to Solid Gold. This is a really exciting time for me because my fish spawned. I haven't had a spawn of goldfish fry to raise in about a year, a little over a year actually. Finally, they decided to spawn again. I do want to say though before this video gets started that I don't breed and sell my fish regularly. It used to be my main goal to become like a a small-scale goldfish breeder and seller here in the United States, but my priorities have really changed a lot over the past year, year and a half. Now I really want to focus on my videos because I found that when I was breeding fish more frequently, the quality and consistency of my videos kind of went down from what I want it to be. And my main focus is connecting with you guys through making these videos. And if I'm doing anything that's taking me away from that and not allowing me to grow and expand this part of solid gold, then I don't want to be doing whatever it is that's distracting me from the videos. I view my breeding of my fish as kind of like a side hobby for me. That's something that's fun for me to do. I don't know. Things are really, really changing for me priorities wise and it's exciting because there's so many possibilities open to me with these you know just making videos and I really want to explore that and uh and maybe not do so much of the other things. I think I'm best suited in front of the camera making videos and talking to you guys. Anytime that I'm lucky enough to have my fish spawn for me, I'm obviously gonna be thrilled about it and take it as an awesome, fun experience, and I will sell the babies, but it's not gonna be like I will always have fish available for sale. I get so many questions about whether I have fish for sale or not, so I just wanted to take a little bit of time at the beginning of this video to say that while I do have goldfish babies right now growing out, it doesn't mean that I have fish for sale or that I will have fish for sale in the future or anything like that. The raising of my goldfish fry for me is more of just a hobby and also I want to do more of sharing it with you guys through my videos like hey here's how you feed baby goldfish here's how you do water changes for baby goldfish here's how you breed your goldfish you know etc it's really like a learning experience that we can share together more so than like I'm trying to breed fish so I can sell them to you guys. That being said, I probably will be selling any of the fry that are left after the growing process and the culling process and you know any ones that I hold back as keepers for myself. I probably will be selling the remaining ones on my website at some point in the future. Probably won't be for another four to six months I would say. So not yet. <laughs> a really, really easy way to find out if I have fish available for sale is just go to my website. My website is my channel name. It's solidgoldaquatics.com. I have a section on there that's called U.S. Bred Goldfish. Those are goldfish that have been bred by me. You can check that section. If there's nothing there, it means I don't have any fish for sale. If you want to find out when I have new fish available for sale at some point in the future, just sign up for my email list and you will find out automatically as soon as they are listed to the website. Now with all of that finally being set, Said, I wanted to share with you guys just a few snippets of my current batch of goldfish fry. These are red and white butterfly telescope fry and there's not a whole lot of them. It's just a very small spawn. Most of the eggs were unfertilized but there are some and as you can see they are free swimming and ready to eat. The female that spawned these eggs is Lincoln. She's right here. Come here girl. I noticed about a week and a half ago that she looked super, super bloated and I got worried because I was worried that she may be developing dropsy or just maybe she was egg bound or something, but in case she was just full of eggs that needed to be released, I decided to put her in the 75 gallon aquarium where a bunch of my male butterflies were living. So I put one lone brave female into an aquarium with a bunch of males. Let's see, Epona was in there. Mordecai, this guy was in there, who else? Clyde, of course, was in there, and I think that might be it. Yeah, just a whole bunch of, <laughs> a whole bunch of males with one female that was potentially ready to drop a bunch of eggs. After I put her in there with the males, nothing ended up happening for several days, so that was really discouraging, but then one day I came out to the fish room and saw eggs. There were eggs all over the floor and the back wall of the aquarium and some on the spawning mops too. But mostly they seemed to be stuck on the floor and the back wall of the aquarium. I really wanted to save the eggs 
and once they're stuck onto something you really can't remove them and transfer them somewhere else without killing them so I just decided to move all the males out of here drain the water level way down I have a sump filter and I wanted to save all the media that was in there because uh, with the water level drained this far down, the sump filter isn't going to be operational because it has to intake water from way up, up at the top of there. What I ended up doing was taking all of the biological media out of here. I was able to save almost all of it. I ended up putting a lot of it in my new canister filter for my 90 gallon aquarium inside. And then I put a bunch of it in these two AquaClear 110 filters on my Watt and I tank. And here are the babies. I'm going to be adding a sponge filter in here eventually, but right now it is just an air stone. I don't have the live brine shrimp ready for them to eat. I'm going to be setting that up today. But I do have some decapsulated brine shrimp that I'm hoping they'll eat, and I'm going to try that and then work on setting up their brine shrimp hatcheries so I have those live brine shrimp for them going forward. So these are the decapsulated brine shrimp eggs. They're pretty convenient because you don't have to go through the hatching out process of actually, you know, cultivating the baby brine shrimp and getting them to hatch. However, it's not a live food, so it's not as readily taken by a lot of baby fish. I am just hoping that these decapsulated brine shrimp will be enough to get these guys by until I can get their live baby brine shrimp set up. And it's like really easy to overfeed. You don't want to put in too much food. I'm just going to put in a tiny bit and see if they seem to like it. It's really hard to tell because they're so tiny and the food that I just put in there is even tinier but I think I saw one or two of them try to eat the food particles, the, the decapsulated brine shrimp, and then spit it back out so I don't think they like it. So that might be a bust for now. I'll keep watching and see what happens but I'm also going to get working on the live baby brine shrimp hatchery right now too. These are my new brine shrimp hatcheries that I got a couple months ago from Gemco. I used to use like a DIY homemade brine shrimp hatchery and they worked just fine, but I was kind of curious to try these ones. This is the first time that I've had fry since buying these a couple months ago, so I'm gonna open them today and set them up and see if I like them. So I think for now I'm gonna put the two brine shrimp hatcheries on this table that's on one of the walls of my fish room. I have PVC around the entire perimeter of the fish room and it has an air pump up there a linear piston air pump supplying air to all the filters you can see where the airline tubing drops down i have installed valves everywhere that i need airline tubing to drop down so then the airline tubing drops down to feed air to the filters in each tank and I'm just going to be able to set up the brine shrimp hatcheries the same way. I just have to drill a new hole up here in the PVC to supply air to the uh, brine shrimp hatcheries down below. I'm using these air valves that I got from Gemco. And you have to drill a hole for this particular size of air valve with a drill bit that is one quarter inch in diameter. After you drill the hole in the PVC, you then have to use this tap and you can see that it's like kind of um, got teeth in it or grooves. So when you drill inside of the hole you created with that, with this tap, it creates a thread and then you just thread this into it and then that has a little barb that you can connect your airline tubing to and this lever here you can switch on and off so you can control the amount of air that is coming through that valve. I just finished drilling the hole into the PVC. Got to clean off all of this stuff here and actually right now because this hole is just leaking like a sieve without any resistance whatsoever it's causing the air in the rest of my filters to be pulled away from there because the air wants to travel the path of least resistance so if it has a hole that has no resistance it's just leaking it's going to come out of that hole and nowhere else so that's what's happening right now if i cover it with my thumb the filters are all going to start back up again
There we go. So now we can screw in our valve. Now the air is coming out of the valve instead of the hole. And if I want to, I can close it all the way by pushing this lever over to the side. Or I can just open it a little bit. Or a little more. Or a little more. Or all the way. I have this T connector, so I'm going to put it on the end of this airline tubing. And then I'll be able to connect two other lengths of airline tubing to this T and then feed air to each one of the brine shrimp hatcheries. I'm gonna do them 12 hours apart. So I'm gonna do this one this morning, right now, and then later in the evening I'll do this one so that this one will be ready to feed tomorrow morning and this one will be ready to feed tomorrow night. And I'll just keep cycling them through like that. Why is that one not bubbling? Oh, there we go. I just had to open it a little more. Okay, so that's bubbling now too. Oh my, it's going crazy now. What is your problem? Don't go crazy, just bubble like normal. <sighs> Seriously. And while I'm out here, I'm gonna throw some food into all the goldfish tanks. I'm not gonna do too much food for each tank because it's been a little chilly here lately and I don't want anybody overeating for the temperature because when the temperature is lower, their metabolism is a lot slower and they don't have to eat as much. But yesterday it finally started warming up again and today it's pretty warm, so I'm gonna start feeding them again today. There's food. Go get the food. Come on, it's right in front of your face. There you go. It's back there. It's back here, silly. You're getting colder. There you go. Let's feed the Watton eyes too. These guys always get really excited about food. And let's feed the Jeekins. Right now this one is kind of overstocked. I had to move these guys in here to get them out of the 75 gallon aquarium since I have fry in there. And I like to keep my males and females separate of my butterflies. So all the males are in here right now. This is almost 100 gallons and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fish in there. So I guess technically it's not overstocked, but it's overstocked for what I prefer to keep my fish. I prefer to keep my fish pretty understocked just so that I can avoid any potential issues. I think that's the best way to avoid issues is to give your fish even more gallons per fish than they technically need. Here's the females. We'll just give them a little bit of food too. And my broad tails. You guys hungry? Well, that's all for this week's update, guys. Be sure to tune in next week for another look at my goldfish fries so you can see how much they've grown. Watch me feed them their live baby brine shrimp that hatched out of the new brine shrimp hatcheries and show you a few of the many deformities for which baby goldfish may need to be culled at around two weeks of age. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified every time I make a new fun and informational video about goldfish and my many other pets as well. If you're interested in supporting my fish room and the videos I make for solid gold, also feel free to check out the link in the description 
description section below to find out all about Solid Gold membership. As members, we have a super secret members only Facebook page that you'll gain access to as a member and you'll get the satisfaction of knowing that your support truly makes every video happen. See you next time and until then, stay gold.